we need to build our scientific enterprise from the get-go as diverse as possible, like pull women in, young people in. It's not enough to say the obvious that Africa needs science. I think we need to go farther and say diverse, energetic, vibrant. Getting into science as a lady was not easy. So many African scientists and researchers and innovators are doing so much with so little, and it's incredibly inspiring that grit, that resilience, that, you know, desire to go after a dream and an idea no matter what the challenges are. I never thought I'll be where I am today. My name is Peris Auma Ambala Ayani. I am a research scientist. At the same time, I am a PhD student at Kenyatta University. My love for science started when I was very young. I chose to focus on virology because during the time I was growing up, there was this HIV and there was no treatment for HIV. As a scientist, I want to be part of eradicating viral infections in Africa. I'm focusing on zoonotic diseases. In particular, I'm focusing on phyloviruses, and this is a group of viruses that uh, cause hemorrhagic fevers. An example, we have Ebola and Marburg. My name is Melissa Achokalela. I am an interact game designer, an illustrator, and animator. I'm also a lecturer of interact game design at the Technical University of Kenya. I'm also a PhD student at the same institution. My research explores storytelling using new emerging technologies with a particular focus on how new emerging tools can be used to remediate African works of origin. Something I noticed was that when works of oral storytelling are documented in linear media, you lose that aspect of being immersed in the same space with a live storyteller. And I thought, well, maybe new emerging tools can actually be used to fill that gap so that we have new story experiences with old works of African origin. My love for storytelling uh, was nurtured when I was quite young. There was a show on television that was called Japan Video Topics, and this was the first time that I saw how people created this kind of moving images, and I thought, well, that looks like something that I could do as well. When I was in high school, you know, the assumption was that to be successful, if you had good grades to study engineering, to become a doctor, why are you throwing away your life just by becoming an artist? Well, uh, there are many opportunities that exist in the arts, and the arts, you know, do not exist in isolation. African scientists are doing all sorts of cool work, interdisciplinary work, field, field bending work, and I think we have no idea what will come out of uh, exploratory research uh, necessarily, but then um, history has shown us the byproducts of this kind of work is, is crucial and feeds into the innovations of tomorrow. Mawazo is a Kiswahili word that means ideas or thoughts and thinking, and uh, what's really interesting is often this has a negative connotation. So if you're somebody with a lot of mawazo swirling around, <laughs> In your mind, you're brooding, and, and often women are, you know, very typecasted as kind of brooding. And my um, co-founder and I and our collaborators were thinking up the name for Mawaza. We loved the idea of taking that word and putting a positive spin on it, that women with ideas are something to be proud of, that having a head full of, you know, thoughts and thinking is actually a positive thing. We have a big focus on science communication, public engagement, policy outreach. These future researchers, these future thought leaders are really oriented towards the public sphere, are really sensitized to the idea that your research should have some relevance, some touch point to society at large. I really believe that the work that we do is important and often overlooked. Mawazo Institute is part of a big movement to think about how does homegrown knowledge, homegrown science play a part in the future of Africa. Mawazo Institute financed the sensitization workshop where I went and I shared the results with the community. I was able to advise the community on aspects on how they can control some of these zoonotic viruses. So basically, Mawazo has had a very big impact to me as an individual and of course to the community where I was conducting the research. I received support to travel for our conferences. So I went for the Africa Computer Human Interaction Conference in Namibia. And this was amazing because, you know, I stopped thinking about my work as only existing in the arts, but existing, you know, admits other, you know, uh, science-based programs. So like, you know, computer science as well. When we look at the world, currently right now, we need science. In future, I hope to become a renowned scientist 
not just here in Kenya, but all over the world. I want to be this virologist, like um, in case we have like outbreaks, I'll be the virologist to come to. People who have an interest in sciences, it doesn't mean that you can have an interest in other fields as well, in the arts, for example. For the first time in a long time, we are on a growth trajectory. And if we just invested a little bit more into this ecosystem, it'll be astounding, all of the amazing ideas and innovations that we will see.